Hi guys, it's Matt here with HeyPress3010 and welcome to another Cinema 4D tutorial. Okay, so this tutorial is pretty basic for beginners and uh, I'm just going to show you how to make cool 3D text and make it look like quite professional, alright? So, if we head on into Cinema 4D, um, I'm going to change the resolution to 1280 by 720 which is what I usually use, okay? Um, alright, if you, right, to make text, you want to go to MoGraph, MoText, but if you have an older version and you're like, well, that isn't there, okay? You want to go to the spline tool and go to text and then nerves, extrude nerves. And make this a child, okay? So you basically you drag it up until the arrow points downwards. And there you go. But I'm not going to use that. Because I have the newer version. Okay, so, MoGraph, MoText. Uh, you want to choose your font, okay? And I don't know what font I'm going to use. Uh... Earthquake's pretty cool. Uh, I'll use this. All right. Okay. So you can change your depth, which just means how thick your text is, basically. Uh, I used to have mine about fifty, depending on the font, because some fonts don't look very good. In fact, I'm I'm gonna change my font. I'm gonna have architect. Okay. Um. Right. Yeah, that's okay. Um. Okay. Most people, to actually like have like a border around the text, what they do is they duplicate it, so they go Control c Control v and then make the depth of the second one smaller, and drag this into the middle, like that, okay? And it doesn't look much different, but if you go into Caps, and then change the Start Cap to Fill a Cap, and the End Cap to Fill a Cap, you can see that it's given it like a nice little border here, and this allows you to have a separate texture on the border. So there's no like proper way to do this. You can do it any way you want. I like having quite a like a small border around, okay? Um Right. So I'm just gonna cut a quick plane. It doesn't matter how big this is, I just make it as big as it'll go. Um Alright, to make um new material, you can go to create new material, or you can just double click here and then double click on the material. Um, just make whatever colour you want, I might have a purple, and you want to go to reflection, as you can see this is way too reflective, unless you actually want this effect, um, I'm going to put my reflection at about 20ish, yeah, and then you go to texture, Fresnel, and this gives it a nice realistic reflection, okay, um, I'm going to leave specular off for this, okay, and then you can go and drag this onto... I'm going to drag it on the main body of the text. Actually, you know what? I'm going to do this for the outline. Make it look a bit cooler. Um, and instead of making a new material, I'm just going to clone the material. So, Control, con control c Control v again. Um, right, which one's this? Okay, it's this one. So, I'm going to make a... grey colour for the main body of the text. Like this. And then for the floor, I'm going to make a whole new material. I'm going to make it pure white. And add a little bit of luminance. And turn off specular. I'm going to drag this on like this. I'll drag up the text back. Okay. And as you can see, it won't look too good because there's no lights or anything. But uh, some of you... Well, if, if you're beginners, you probably won't have like, light kits and things, so you can just use the like, standard light. Um, drag it up a little bit. You can put it at an angle to get different shadows. And to actually, if you know, if you render that, you notice there isn't any shadows, but to get a shadow, just go to the shadow option. Uh, soft shadows gives you like a normal shadow. And hard shadows, just as it is, the edges are more harder. Like, this is a soft shadow. And hard shadows. Or more like a solid object like this, but I like soft shadows. Looks more realistic. Okay. Um I think the shadows are a bit too off to the side, so I'm gonna make the light just above it. Like this. And another cool effect is a uh, well global illumination and ambient occlusion, okay? These are some other cool effects, but they make your render time a lot, lot longer, so bear that in mind, okay? So uh you can just play with the settings a bit. I usually have the maximum real length about 500 and 
change his color a little bit. Okay, so this should give an overall nicer effect, okay? But it does take a lot longer to render. And you see these little yellow boxes here, these are cores. So I have an 8 core processor, so the more cores you have, the quicker the render time, because the more cores you have, the render pieces of it. So, alright, uh, that looks okay. Um, I think I might switch the materials around. I'm, I'm not that keen on it. See what it looks like again. If you don't want to wait for like the whole scene to render, you can just uh, go here, go to interactive uh, render region, and drag it over the text. So you can see it renders like slowly, but just one area. That's looking okay. Right. Um, if you want to know how to rotate single letters, okay, what you want to do is you want to. I'm gonna turn off this. Um, what you want to do is you want to highlight both the text objects and press C, and this makes them editable. And another way of doing this, if you can't remember the shortcut, is just to come over here and click this button to make it editable. Okay. And this gives you each individual letter to rotate freely. Okay. Just like this. So I'm gonna select both letter T's, and you come to here, come to the rotate tool, and you can just rotate it any way you want, like this. So I can just do this for either letter. Drag it back a little bit. I can position them however I want. Um, this probably won't look like good because I'm just doing it quickly, but uh, you'll have more time to do it, so you can just make it look perfect. Okay. Alright. And then I can render this. You notice when you when you click, the rendered screen goes off. You can solve this by just clicking the middle button instead. And it renders it in the picture viewer, which actually keeps it here. And if you render two pictures, I'll show you this one second, once this is rendered. Okay, if you render two pictures, say if I turn off ambient occlusion and global illumination and render it again, okay, um, I can then go to set as A and set as B and then I can drag this to see the difference. So this is the difference which global illumination and uh, ambient occlusion makes. You might not be able to tell the difference but it certainly lightens it up a lot and adds some more shadows. I think it gives it more like a more realistic effect. Okay, so what else can we do? Um, uh, right. So let's just add another mo text. Um, if some fonts, right, are really like cramped together, I'll try and get a font. Um, say if we use this, like some fonts you might find which are too close together, and you can solve this by just going on a uh, horizontal spacing. And you can move the letters a lot further away. Or you can bunch them up if you like that. Maybe not that much. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Alright, thank you for watching. As you can see on the video now, there's some of my older videos. Just check them out. And alright, I'll see you in the next tutorial. Bye.